Okay, welcome back everyone. Uh, we've got a remote speaker for this talk. Uh, it's a 20 minute talk from uh, Neil Jakeman on uh, research themes, autonomous agendas for IC labs. So as always, feel free to put your questions into Slido during the talk. All right, hello everybody, everyone. Hear me okay? Yay. Great. <laughs> um, right, I'm, I'm presenting here from sunny Brighton after a last minute change of plan. So as I'm trying to stay COVID free before surgery, except it got me a kind of lightweight discussion before the lunchtime slot. Um, so, um, I'm Neil Jakeman, Research Software Analyst at King's Digital Lab. That also happens to be our Twitter handle. So, uh, we're closing in on 3,000 followers now. So, if you can do a follow, um, get us over that, over that mark, that will be great. Um, it's tricky to keep these presentations um, engaging uh, from at this distance. So, I've decided to use DALI to sort of liven up my, uh, liven up my presentation. Um, and here's a few interpretations of... Um, what an office with a team of software developers experimenting with code looks like, according to AI. Um, I would say that KDL looked like number three. Um, the first two looked a little bit sort of a bit high tech for us. Um, so research themes is what I'm here to talk about. And this presentation is pitched without any particular skill level or specialization in mind. Uh, the message here is really is there any lab setting where processes are being established or maybe in stage two of being established, perhaps you have your software development life cycle taken care of and your career pathways are defined, your legacy estate is, uh, is allegedly under control. What comes next? You've got the basics set up and it's time to think about the more inspirational stuff and the, and the things that get us up in the morning. So here's another set of images courtesy of Dali to trying to encapsulate that sense of experimentation and excitement that we get from being RSE practitioners. So we uh, at, the, at the lab instituted this concept of research themes um, in response to several concerns, which I'll try to summarize here. Um, so very quickly, we see an inherent tension between providing research services and enabling experimentation that we all want to take part in. So for us, we operate in an environment where one of our main functions is to support academic colleagues in creating grant applications and developing technical components as agreed. And funding is usually linked to a project, so we need to support eligible academic staff to secure those, those big research grants. However, we think once development is underway, the RSE is an act of collaborative research between experts, and so there's a, a considerable effort is needed to stay up to date with technical developments that might enhance the outcomes of an active project. We also think it's the responsibility of hosting institutions to nurture uh, the intellectual ambitions of the staff. Um, traditional software development might offer better salaries, it might offer better job security. And so we know that the people who choose to work in RSE labs are here because they're invigorated by the projects and the environment. And many of us can't imagine forfeiting that, that, that intellectual variety. However, we also know that family needs and circumstances can often trump personal and professional priorities. And one of the long-standing issues for, for RSE in a project funding setting is the precarity. Um, and it, it's, to this day, it's still quite difficult to retain staff for the full duration of a project when funding is linked to a project. Um, if we're not working on a project or, or we are experimenting, sometimes that uh, non-project activity can become quite fragmented. So on one end of the scale, we've got this perhaps perceived drudgery of routine service provision. But at the other end of the scale is this kind of free pool playground of individualist passion projects. And how do we balance those two extremes and make sure that the activity uh, that isn't taking place under the auspices of a project is still productive? We need to make sure that our experimental work is aligned to institutional strategies. And in any large university with multiple faculties and departments, there are lots of under the radar, low profile projects happening. So what can the RSC lab to do to socialize its skills and priorities and insert itself by default into the early conversations when new projects are being dreamed up? Um, and how can we simultaneously influence uh, and align with strategy? And the last point on this slide is kind of a matter of pride. It's the standing of, of our RSE practice. So in this audience, I'm preaching to the choir, we largely understand that research outputs 
don't need to be conference papers or journal articles or book chapters, but can equally be in the form of software, algorithms, etc. So how do we make sure that our own intellectual contributions are, are recognised as research outputs? Okay, so our response to this is what we call the, the research theme, the formal research theme. And our research theme is essentially a widely socialised socialized rather summary of our strategic and intellectual priorities. And if we're considering what we want to be a theme, we're thinking about the diversity of projects that are coming to us and the natural groupings that emerge. And we consider what KDL, my lab, needs to offer to remain relevant and viable and how to cluster these approaches according to our own interests in a manageable way. And so we make a plan and we take it up through line management and in this way we continue to support our colleagues in developing grant bids and delivering projects. Um, we need to make an explicit alignment with institutional priorities as well. So in a really competitive funding landscape, a unit like ours might be seen as a luxury, um, but with a stated research theme, we have an opportunity to articulate our extra value. And that's a comms task that we can more readily support with a structured process that helps give a comprehensive overview of scope of activity within a particular research theme. And we need to demonstrate our value. So as I say, typically our work is project funded, but parts of the project might already show how work within a theme is com contributing to, uh, to institutional prestige. But this is also an opportunity to point out missed opportunities. So regardless of our interest in a project, we sometimes have to conclude that we aren't equipped presently to do it justice in terms of skill or resources. And what is the opportunity cost here and how do we make that clear? We try to be transparent around the resources we need. Um, so for the first, did, um, the first research theme we, we started with is digital creativity. And in that we include things like real-time engines, 3D software, image editing, narrative design, immersive experience, and so on. And if we want to be doing this type of work, there'll always be some well-resourced competitor out there who doesn't need to rely exclusively on good real-time or open source tools or low-cost pipelines. Um, and so should we be making a shopping list of the things we need to accumulate in a, in a very piecemeal way, one problem at a time? Or we want to, on one hand, we want to balance the risk of kit just sort of gathering dust in the cupboard while we wait for the right project. And on the other hand, we need to be equipped and competent in preparation for that project uh, when it comes along. So it's really useful to make an inventory of the skills and resources that are already available as well as the wish list that we want to augment and, and build upon those existing resources. Uh, we highlight how we will share our skills and, and make partners aware of the capabilities within the lab. So we're very lucky to enjoy close working relationships with our teaching departments. Uh, we often get asked to uh, make to contribute to guest lectures or, or workshops, and we have a small time allowance to do this this sort of teaching activity. And in a setting where teaching is is heavily focused on theory, these practical sessions are really always very positively received by students. The last point I want to make on this slide is kind of this idea of fencing off experimental space um, to build on as a normal part of our activities. We already operate kind of 10% time allowance to engage in CPD, and this is great for personal development. And it also means that that 10% time means that we can supplement smaller projects um, through, through goodwill contributions of, of personal interest. Okay, the lab. Some of us you may have met this week so far. Who are we? There's 12 of us there. We don't quite look like that anymore because I took those pictures some five years ago. So we might collectively weigh a little bit more. Uh, some of us have come to uh, RSE through conventional routes, uh, uh, commercial development or academic uh, computer science backgrounds. And other, others of us have uh, had more circuitous routes to get here. But we think there's real value in, in that diversity of experience. Uh, increasingly, our host institutions are trying to frame their research activity, not just in terms of specialist domain outputs, but also measuring against sustainability goals and global challenges, things like equality, inclusivity, creative and sustainable economies, well-being and climate change. 
And drawing on this diversity then makes real economic and strategic sense. So we have a mix of creative backgrounds in the lab, writers, fashion designer, photographer, art director. And in all these capacities, we've contributed a lot to projects in unexpected and, and very personally rewarding ways. We've recently worked on a feasibility study for a sustainable fashion project because we genuinely felt that we could bring extra value by the many hats that we've we've worn through our professional careers. Another one of the reasons for establishing formal research themes is for the sake of giving equal opportunities to all lab members to pursue the work that inspires them and excites them, rather than just that fortunate few who happen to have the right projects come along at the right time. Okay, so this is the, the bare bones of our, of our research theme. Uh, and we want to demonstrate existing value and opportunity costs and also help our potential partners get a sense of the activity and capacity in the lab and help us to link up parallel activity uh, across the college and in our, in our networks. So the scope really was about what it is we hope to achieve, how and when we're measuring progress, which networks we're building on, which do we want to develop, which current project activities have helped us recognize the need for a research theme, and uh, which specific activities we plan to progress this theme towards the ultimate goal, which I think is becoming embedded practice. And the theme we chose to test this process with, as I said, is what we loosely refer to as digital creativity. Um, digital creativity chosen as a theme to model our approach around due to the level of activity that we were already classifying in this way. It's been a buzz term in the lab for a while, but without consolidating in any, any meaningful and uh, directed way. Um, so the college has an existing partnership with the National Gallery in their NGX space, and we were lending technical guidance to residences there. Uh, the King's Culture Team were running a program of teaching digital creative skills in the aftermath of COVID disruptions, which we were able to contribute to as well. Um, and it was also clear that many disciplines were making use of XR technologies and investing in hardware and skills without a kind of connecting high level strategy or considering the economies of scale that, be, that could be tapped into and hence we were involved in the, the VR special interest group. And on the other side of that slide, we're, we're, we're we're a group of, of, of technical professionals and we've got our ears to the ground so we could observe how trends are emerging through the network buzz around real time and XR. And the nature of the project inquiries to KDL was showing steady increase in things like AI generated content, 3D modeling and, and, and XR experiences. And lastly, through smaller funding opportunities and the use of 10% time allocation that I already mentioned, we've started to acquire a portfolio of work in these creative areas too. For instance, we have the uh, digital ghost hunt, which is the brainchild of my colleague, Elliot Hall, who developed with Kip Theatre an, an AR uh, um, experience performance, which takes place in, in, uh, in theatres around the country. Um, there was the Room to Breathe project, which was uh, an XR reproduction of a, of a physical exhibition that was that was uh, in the UK Migration Museum in London. Uh, time for a little interjection by Dali here. This is hunting a digital ghost in an old theatre. So, to begin with, we needed a concise uh, prose expression of what we are aiming to achieve, and that came most easily uh, as a manifesto rather than bullet points and spreadsheets. Um, I'll just read it out for you. We will pursue research activity that enriches culture through digital modalities, through lowering barriers to participation, equipping students and staff with a vocabulary to articulate their creative visions, and by providing pathways, expertise, and equipment to collaborate and innovate. And naturally, it took a few attempts for us to agree on the phrasing of this and make sure that it was pithy, punchy, and captured our intentions. But having this statement also helps us to reflect objectively on what it is that we're already doing to address this, this digital creativity research theme. So making the case for this focus of effort to faculty who are our main sponsors, it's best to keep these, these high level goals uh, quite focused and not too numerous, and also make sure that all those goals demonstrate a, a clear value proposition. So for instance, we want to establish King's Digital Lab as a trusted maker 
be co-creating and practice-led research. Diversification is a very attractive goal for a faculty that tends to focus on a few major fundings, uh, funders and, and a few major schemes. Um, maintaining skills. An RSC lab is a, is a big investment and keeping it up to date and relevant is vital to maintain its value. Um, and we see this digital creativity theme as, as a way of doing that. Um, and we want to expand and develop our network of potential collaborators. So all of these are, are kind of framed in value terms. And the next step in these high level goals is to specify some, some measure of success. And these can be fairly modest measures at this stage, but it helps to have some demonstrable targets. Um, some hypothetical ones here. Year one, we want to develop a project application um, which, in which the KDL contribution is not through our normal embedded practice. We want to apply to at least one funding scheme that we've never used before. We want to acquire recognised accreditations in, in key pieces of software, and perhaps we can, with the help of our King's Culture colleagues, um, consolidate networks through establishing a new special interest group. So, um, we plan on re reviewing this progression of this theme on a sort of quarterly basis, um, as this work gels with our quarterly planning schedule, which is when we're making some of the big strategic decisions um, around projects. And it would be great to be able to do that through the additional lens of research themes. And how do we consider the lifespan of a theme? Is it indefinite? Almost certainly not. We want to aim for the subject of the theme to make its way into our embedded practice that is, until it needs no special consideration, but equally the institutional climate can change and it might become less relevant for us. Um, Dali there showing an archaeologist wearing a VR headset in a ruined castle on an alien planet. So the next section of our template deals with who our existing networks are and who our aspirational networks should be, again taking that value focused approach. So we want to make sure that we're showing who we're working with internally and externally in terms of organisations, SMEs, but also where we want to take this, this theme. Uh, the Centre for Health Humanities at King's is already doing lots of work in XR and it would be really great to, to, do some, to do some research activity with them. And also we want to make sure that we position uh, the lab as a key participant, make sure we've got a seat at the table when these new initiatives are being developed, such as the creative practice lab that we're talking about currently. But clearly having these targets isn't the same as delivering these targets or being empowered to deliver these targets. So in addition to articulating the institutional benefits uh, in, 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 in pros and in, in blitz, we um, have to have the question of what we need for delivery and our research theme template is intended to be a living document through which we should eventually balance the books and who doesn't like a spreadsheet particularly in management so some of the resources we need we have but we also need to be very clear about how we allocate those resources and this slide is just a snippet of part of a costing table with the sort of things we include in the income and outgoings so in row one, we're characterising some of our current activities as already contributing to this research team. And it's helpful to show that faculty aren't just supporting the whims of individuals in the lab, but are working with a tide of activity. And in row two, we're showing some of our services, such as pre-grant analysis, which are free. And then we make clear that we're subsidising this theme within the department to generate new project income. Then in the third row, we're looking at examples of outlay on, on tech and for digital creativity we need to be able to experiment with it and offer to our partners cutting edge technology and to be familiar and competent with its use and similarly in row four there might be software that we need like to have but have previously had to wait for a suitable project to justify the expense and a research theme allows us to put the cart before the horse to a certain extent for instance we, we can't work on the our projects if we don't have fundamental competencies in, excuse me, fundamental competencies in software and basic equipment. And in the absence of this kind of autonomous agenda, we're in a catch-22 situation where we're buying for the projects we want to do, but not being able to convincingly back up our, our, our ability to deliver. I think Neil got that minute. Um, <coughs> 
hey, nearly done. We're a, we're a democratic lot in, in King's Digital Lab. I think mean, a strategic statement like this, which can have a big impact on people's workflows and inboxes, we need to collectively agree um, um, this, this theme. And consequently, we get sign off from all the different roles in the lab so we can be confident that this is being done in an acceptable way for everyone. Um, digital creativity was just the start of uh, uh, research themes. When the next thing we'd like to develop is um, is mean machine learning, particularly machine learning methods in arts and humanities research. And again, this is because we've seen an uptick in partner interest and a wave of media attention on this topic. We have skills, and there are initiatives like the King's AI Institute, which we want to tap into. And there are projects already where some of the activity can be characterised as part of this theme. And it's fairly straightforward to identify the resources we would need and the skills and software and demonstrate the value. And finally, though, this template as it is lends itself well to this kind of technocentric research theme like uh, AI, machine learning and digital creativity. But what about other themes which ask for a more reflective approach? And my colleague Sam Callahan yesterday published a blog post on the lab's interest in indigenous digital humanities, which I would encourage you all to have a look at. And the next step then for us is to think about how we can make sure that this sort of research theme is equally well catered for by, by the processes that we develop. Um, there's a link there. Um, so we have a template and a process virtually ready for sharing. And when we do, it will be available uh, at the same location as all our software development lifecycle templates um, through that link, RSE. SDLC. Um, and rather than list all the people involved in creating our processes, I've chosen just to include a link to the Who We Are page at KDL. Um, so thanks. I tried to zip through that. I hope I've just got in within the within the twenty odd minutes. Um, and I will uh, unshare my screen. Okay, so hopefully you heard the round of applause. <laughs> Thanks very much. Okay. Uh, so now I've got time for a few questions. I was thinking you've done a lot, you've obviously done a lot of work in setting up the structure of the group. What sort of conversation did you have to have with that senior university management to be able to do what you want to do? Um, so, I mean, with, with the lab, we've definitely got this, the, the, the remit, our, our raison d'etre is definitely about um, uh, securing research income and project income through um through through colleagues in through colleagues in faculty. And so I think the important thing, the, the overwhelming the important thing in developing this is, is to make sure that you you're demonstrating value all the way through and underlining um that that concept of missed uh, of missed opportunity. And there are a lot of uh, colleagues who want to work with new methodologies um that the lab hasn't um particularly been been known for in the past, but um, but that they're very interested in in in, in doing more of. Um, so if we can show, we can demonstrate that the level of interest coming to us is showing that there are things we're missing out on, um, which would not only bring in project income but also diversify uh, the, the funding routes. That then that's an easier sell. Okay, um, I see a question just come in about how many research themes does KDL have? Officially, one at the moment, which is digital creativity. Um, the uh, indigenous DH theme is is probably the second most mature theme, ready to be uh, ready to be socialised. Um, uh, machine learning, I think, it is would, would probably be up there as well. Um, if it weren't for the fact that the the, the, the resident experts in, in that area are um, um, are, are very busy as, as developers, and we don't tend to have much sort of time to, to, to think outside the box, even though regardless of our of our, of our ten percent time allocation. Um, how does KDL anticipate working with the new Central Kings RSE team? Anonymous. Is that someone from the King's Central RSD team? <laughs> um, so we're already working very closely um, with them. So we, we've migrated all our infrastructure. Um, our, our previously, um, our, our infrastructure is now sort of hosted on on, on, on King's e research infrastructure. Um, and hopefully the RSD team there is kind of 
benefiting with um, benefiting uh, from our experience in establishing SDLC processes over the last five, six years. Um, so I think that um, you know, un un under the leadership of Ariana and, and, and previously James, we've done a lot to kind of establish uh, career paths um, uh, uh, and processes which we feel are really are really valuable to share with, with, with the community, both in Kings uh, and, and beyond. As I say, we're kind of moving on to stage two and, and the research theme idea is really a stage two process, is, is a consolidation process after the basics have, have got, have got uh, set up. Okay, so I reckon probably time for one more quick question. Maybe the one at the bottom. So most I, I won't answer, answer Ariana's question because, well, yeah. it's not a question because she's my boss. Um, <laughs> most RSE groups are quite small. What would you say is the minimal number of people you need in a specific area to get a research team fully established? Uh, it's a pretty good question, actually, because I kind of took on the unofficial um, portfolio for digital creativity probably by myself for a couple of years. And I think it would be fair to say that it was quite piecemeal, fragmented activity. Um, and then Elliot, who is the brainchild, the, 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 the creator of the digital ghost hunt, um, also sort of took on that, that responsibility. Um, and it really helps to have um, a, a couple of projects going and it helps to be able to have someone to, 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 um, to bash heads with and, and to think about, think these ideas through. Um, uh, and just to just to make sure that you're both um, uh, working towards a common goal um, rather than rather than an individualist goal. So two is the answer. <laughs> okay, thanks, Neil, for a great talk, and thanks to the panelists from the pre uh, from the previous event for again a great panel. And can we have a final final sorry, final round of applause for everyone, please, before we go to lunch. <laughs>